a gentle reminder to keep your mobile phones in silent mode during the symposium. And we'll be expecting the chief guest at 0900 hours. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen we are now witnessing the arrival of the chief guest secretary ministry of defense general kamal gurnath accompanied by commandant of national defense college major general amal karuna sekar please rise for the arrival of the chief guest Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, to ceremonially inaugurate the proceedings, we would like to invite our chief guest, Secretary, Ministry of Defence, General Kamal Gunaratne, to join us in lighting the traditional oil lamp. We also invite our keynote speaker, Mr. Lalit Viratunga, Chief of Defence Staff, General Shavendra Silva, Commander of the Army, Captain General Vikram Liyanagi. Commander of the Navy, Vice Admiral Nishant Ulugetanna. Commander of the Air Force, Air Marshal Sudarshan Patirana. Vice Chancellor, Sir John Kotara Defence University, Major General Milinda Piris. Commandant, NDC, Major General Amal Karwa Sekara. Representing the Police Department, Senior DIG Ranmal Kodituaku. Senior Most Coast Participants of Army. Navy, Air Force, and Police.
please rise for the national anthem Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Let us now observe one minute silence to remember and pay our tribute to the fallen war heroes who have made the supreme sacrifice for the motherland. Please be seated. <clears throat> now, let's witness a documentary of the National Defense College. Sri Lanka has established itself as an essential node in commercial and security activities, as well as one of the most strategically prominent states in the Indian Ocean. Therefore, Sri Lanka needs to develop strategies and policies to its national security to counter various internal and external threats, as well as empower its armed forces, police department, 
and civil administrative service. Most of the countries in the world already had started NDCs and utilized its service towards a national security with a modern approach. Therefore, boundless difficulties from past history to present in the country urged an emergency to form a higher educational institute for national security in order to maintain sustainable peace. As a result of the relentless efforts exerted to form a NDC, in the year 2016, the government has granted approval to designate this Mumtaz Mahal to NDC under the Ministry of Defense. The Mumtaz Mahal, built in 1927, thereafter this house was assigned to the official residence of the first speaker, Sir Francis Mollemure, and continuously been the official residence for the speakers of the country until the year 2001. Subsequently, this property was used for several other state affairs. The mission of the NDC is to develop future policy makers on national security and strategy. The mission to impart knowledge and develop future leaders in an integrated strategic environment to function as strategic thinkers in the realm of national security, statecraft, diplomacy and public policy to uphold national interests. The National Security and Strategic Study course is a multidisciplinary learning platform tailored to suit the stated objective. A total of eight study modules spread over two semesters. Each module is developed considering the formulation of strategic options for decision-making with respect to current national, regional, and global issues or scenarios that affects national security and policy. Further, course participants have the opportunity to meet the state leaders and policymakers locally and internationally to broaden their understanding of national security. Therefore, course participants will be given an opportunity to participate in local visits and foreign visits to at least one developed and one developing country where they could acquire thorough knowledge on respective countries' strategies, policies, and statecraft. The Institute especially conditions the enhancement of the careers in the fields of security by guiding individuals towards masters and MPhil degrees accredited to General Sir John Kotalawala Defence University, Sri Lanka. The National Defence College, fully furnished with technology and facilities, where all basic needs are provided to enhance the knowledge of students as well as concerning their comfort at NDC premises. The NDC of Sri Lanka was officially opened by His Excellency Godabe Rajpaksha, President of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces and Minister of Defense. Distinguished guests, members of the Diplomatic Corps, ladies and gentlemen, we warmly welcome you and those who are joining us through the virtual platforms to the inaugural research symposium of National Defense College on the theme, Exploring Multinodal Security Dynamics. We respectfully invite Major General Amal Karna Sekara, the Commandant of National Defense College, to deliver the welcome remarks. Major General Amal Karuna Sekara was commissioned to the 1st Battalion Sri Lanka Light Infantry on 14 Jan 1984. He has followed Army Command and Staff Course India, Civil Military Response to Terrorism in USA, 
international intelligence directors course in uk and defense and strategic studies course in national defense university china general has held senior command and staff appointments such as director training director military intelligence divisional commander security forces commander military secretary master general ordnance commandant defense services command and staff college and chief of staff of the sri lanka army at which point he retired and was recalled for active service and appointed as the first commandant of the prestigious national defense college he holds master of defense and strategic studies from the university of madras india master of science degree in defense management from the sir general sir john kotalawala defense university sri lanka and msc in defense and strategic studies from the university of beijing china he was awarded with rana vikrama padakama rana sura padakama vishishta seva vibhushana and uttama seva padakama for his bravery and unblemished military career sir secretary to ministry of defense general kamal gunratna former secretary to the president mr lalit veeratunga chief of defense staff command of the army commander of the navy command of the air force vice chancellor of kotalawala defense university past commanders defense attaches and members of the diplomatic co distinguished invitees ladies and gentlemen good morning it is my great honor and privilege to warmly welcome our chief guest secretary to ministry of defense general kamal gunratna to this first ever research symposium of the national defense college also i would like to extend my sincere gratitude to mr lalit veeratunga former secretary to the president for accepting our invitation to deliver the keynote address today i take this opportunity to warmly welcome all other distinguished guests who have accepted our invitation and been present here today to witness inaugural research symposium of the national defense college unlike past the world is experiencing rapidly evolving dynamics in international relations which requires deep analysis of the geopolitical situation and how we respond while ensuring our national interest sri lanka's existence and accomplishment of its national objectives are depending on our comprehensive understanding of the environment around us as well as our ability to convince others of our stance given the multifaceted global political and geopolitical strategic environment sri lanka needs careful strategic balancing and intricate policy maneuvers as such the policy makers always well as the academia of defense politics and international relations have to create a renaissance between real world issues and strategic thoughts the national security and strategic studies course at ndc is deliberately designed to bridge this gap by delivering realistic education that suits the sri lankan domestic security narratives and international security concerns in this backdrop i feel really proud and honor to launch our inaugural research symposium under the theme of exploring multinodal security dynamics as part of our course curriculum the event is exclusively 
design to uphold defense research culture and create an environment to explore research philosophies related to the disciplines of national security and strategic studies. Contributions were invited from course participants of a broad range of topics pertaining to the fields of strategic studies, Sri Lanka studies, economic security, international security, geopolitics, and science and technology. The papers that we'll be presenting today were selected after rigorous scrutiny and blind peer reviews. With this background, I believe that this symposium will be a catalyst to foster networking among academia, senior military and police officers, to exchange and share academic notions related to contemporary security issues. Also, I'm certain that this will be a great platform for the scholars to improve, sharpen, and share their wisdom, knowledge, and experiences on many grounds such as research, intellectual, analytical, and strategic perspectives, which are directly bonded with the academic curriculum. Hence, this forum can be considered as the spirit of their fruitful exploration in the research arena. I am certain that the lineup of presentations, panel discussions, and formal and informal interactions taking place during the next couple of hours will be instrumental in this regard. In concluding, I wish all the participants a very interesting, thought-provoking, and productive time at this inaugural research symposium of National Defense College. Once again, on behalf of all members of NDC, I welcome all the distinguished invitees to the inaugural research symposium of the National Defense College. The NDC is privileged to have you with us today. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, sir. Next, we have the address by the chief guest. We kindly invite Brigadier Asanga Pereira, Secretary of National Defense College, to introduce the chief guest. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It gives me a great honor and pride to introduce the chief guest of the inaugural NDC Research Symposium 2022, General Kamal Gunaratna, WWV, RWP, RSP, USP, NDC, PSC, MPhil, Secretary to the Ministry of Defense at this August gathering. The NDC is grateful to the Secretary, Minister of Defense, for the impeccable support extended throughout to uplift the standard of the National Defense College that we cherish today. Ladies and gentlemen, General Kamal Gunratna is an ionic leadership figure in Sri Lanka who was elevated to the four-star general rank by Echi, the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka on 28 December 2020. As a gallant military leader with a distinguished military career spanning over 35 years, holding a number of command, staff, and instructional appointments, and having almost three years of service as a government official of Sri Lanka. General Kamal Gunratna, as the present secretary to the Minister of Defense, acts as the principal defense policy maker and advisor on defense and national security related matters to achieve the president. Further, to the colossal extent of vital responsibilities absorbed by General Kamal Gunratna, he also holds the chairmanships of presidential task force to build a secure country, disciplined, virtuous, and lawful society, and for archaeological heritage management in the eastern province of Sri Lanka. Being a renowned senior military officer, 
the role played by him as the general officer commanding 53 infantry division during the final phase of the humanitarian operation was highly admirable and has made his records in the contemporary war history of sri lanka he has served as the commander security force vanni and during the latter stage of his military career he was he has held two principal staff officer appointments at army headquarters as the adjutant general and master general ordnance he has also held the prestigious colonel of the regiment appointments of the mechanized infantry regiment special forces uh, regiment and the gajaba regiment in alternate timings and has extended a not worthy service to the three regiments during three tenures general kamal gunaratna had been awarded several gallantry awards such as veera vikrama vibhushana rana vikrama padakkama rana sura padakkama for his acts of bravery and exceptional acts of vala in the battlefield uttama seva padakkama for unblemished exceptional and exemplary conduct during his extinguished military service and deshaputra sammanaya for being wounded while on active duty during operations as a highly qualified personage he possesses a masters degree in the field of art and science of warfare from the university of balkistan and has earned his highest military academic qualification that is ndc from esteemed military institution national defense college india he also possesses an mphil in defense and strategic studies from university of madras further he has attended a number of seminars workshops and conferences overseas during his career in the sri lanka army and has also served in the diplomatic field as the deputy head of mission in brazil he is an author who innovated the war literature for the first time in sri lanka history and has published seven books to date including the revolutionary war literary sensation in sri lanka road to nandikada he is also an eminent lyrics right writer who has written seven songs thus far general kamal gunaratna is married to mrs chitani gunaratna and they are blessed with a daughter ladies and gentlemen with this brief introduction now let me respectfully invite general kamal gunaratna wwv rwp rsp usp ndc psc mphil secretary to the ministry of defense to address this august gathering also let me invite major general amal karuna sekara the commander national defense college to accompany him to the stage thank you very much keynote speaker of the inaugural research symposium of ndc mr alitwir runga chief of defense staff commander of the army commander of the navy and commander of the air force vice chancellor of kdu defense attaches defense advisors of the friendly foreign nations and members of the diplomatic corps eminent scholars senior officers of the armed forces and police post participants of the national security and strategic studies course distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen good morning i consider it as a great pleasure and a privilege to be present here today at the inaugural research symposium of national defense college which takes place with the participation of the senior officers of armed forces and department of police of the first ever national security and strategic studies course conducted at the national defense college sri lanka therefore i take this opportunity to extend my gratitude to the incumbent commandant the founding figure of the national defense college sri lanka the highest seat of military education in the country for the invitation extended for me 
to take part in this event as the chief guest. Thank you. It is my foremost understanding that the advancement of the research culture through this inaugural research symposium at NDC is providing a golden opportunity for academia and senior officers of the armed forces and police to share their research findings and expertise in different facts in the spectrum of national security. Further, the provision of the opportunity for the exploration of wider area of research expertise would be absolutely beneficial for all the course participants of NDC to broaden their horizons through this academic exposure. The theme selected for this inaugural symposium of NDC, exploring multinodal security dynamics, is apparently a very pertinent theme that would enable the opportunity to probe through the dynamic nature of the security apparatus, which is evolving day by day. In that, it is promising to see the variety and diversity of the research subjects, such as ancient concepts of war, international relations, economic and social issues, nuclear and other weapon systems, foreign policy and geopolitics. All these are a perfect combination of subjects to be dwelt during this sort of a high forum on national security at a strategic level that would enable to share and discuss all military subjects at the backdrop of international relations and strategic studies. You see. Therefore, I sincerely believe that all of you would be able to explore your understandings on these pertinent disciplines at the best during this endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is changing fast and the threats and challenges that we face are also evolving day by day. At a time of global independence, the contemporary security threats and challenges such as ch climate changes, global terrorism, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, economic crisis, famine, infectious diseases, cyber attacks, etc. are global in their scope, transitional in their efforts and however can never be solved by military means only. It needs a synchronized application of all possible spheres stemming under all other elements of national power with the military element in order to gain success as the crisis today have crossed the identified borders of conventional war fighting in which the friend and the foe are already known. National security as defined is the ability of a country's government to protect its citizens, economy, and other institutions. As of today, the scope of security in the context of non-military nature revolves around the provision of economic, economic security, political security, energy security, homeland security, cyber security, human security and environmental security in a broader context. Accordingly, to ensure the national security, the governments rely on differing modes of tactics, including political, economic and military power, along with diplomacy that are commonly known as elements of national power. Therefore, it is evident that the national security has quietly moved away from its traditionally centered approach of defense and military protection of sovereignty and territorial integrity in protecting the country from external invasions as well as internal rebellions to a more people-centered approach of security and satisfy uh, and safety of citizen, which is a late 20th century phenomenon. These conceptual de developments that had taken place have not only expanded the boundaries of national security, but also resulted 
in blurring the very important distinction between national security and human security. On an individual level, in the context of Sri Lanka, without any exceptions, national security dynamics today includes managing global pandemics, mitigating and adapting to climate change, maintaining clean water, maintaining reliable food supplies, and protecting property of individuals and communities, dealing with economic and political dilemmas, as well as the ability to protect the state sovereignty influenced by a number of international actors. The 21st century, the Indian Ocean, together with the Western Pacific Ocean, has come to the forefront of global trade and geostrategic competition. Sri Lanka being a country at the most significant location in the Indian Ocean has become vulnerable for arms and drugs trafficking, illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing on the man-made cycle, whereas the global warming and resulting sea level rises and water anomalies increased ocean pollution and impact on marine ecosystems, depleted fisheries, rising of ocean temperatures and salinity as natural issues are creating problems in the Indian Ocean that in turn has created a severe impact on security of Sri Lanka in the Indian Ocean. Ladies and gentlemen, at this context, Sri Lanka has to keep its eyes and minds open to counter all such threats that are at her doorstep. Today, at the backdrop of a challenging economy, along with backward political ideologies in place, Sri Lanka has ever recorded its worst ever status in its history after independence. Faced by a turmoil of permanent emanated from separatist ideology, backed by groups of international actors eager for power among minority political parties, Sri Lanka's national security demands a greater attention unlike during the entire history of the country ever since independence. Therefore, I hope this endeavor made by the National Defense College would undoubtedly pave the way towards stemming novel perspectives in facing these challenges ahead of the country in ensuring everlasting peace and security in the country. In that endeavor, with regard to the importance of promoting research culture, the NDC is instrumental in developing core values of national security in a result-oriented standpoint. Furthermore, I am well certain that the course participants of the National Security and Strate Strategic Studies course in NDC, with their interest, commitment and knowledge in diverse academic disciplines and outside researchers' inputs, would contribute immensely to this inaugural research symposium theme. The knowledge that you are going to unearth and share during this conference would be of immense benefit, not only to the academic community, but to the entire humankind to make their lives better. Most importantly, beyond doubt, the ideas which would be shared by the keynote speaker, Mr. Lalit Virothunga, today would be of an immense value to pay the way for the researchers to impart their respective visions and philosophies on the years exclusive and timely pertinent theme of the symposium. Therefore, let me express my most sincere appreciation to Mr. Lalit Virtunga for committing his valuable time to deliver the keynote speech today and to the Commandant NDC and his team for inviting me for this occasion as the chief guest and giving me an opportunity to speak to all of you. Let me appreciate all the efforts and congratulate all of you for working your way towards a team. Finally, I wish all the participants all the very best 
in their research endeavors and the NDC research symposium to be very successful every way imaginable. Thank you very much. Thank you all. So may I request you to remain on stage for a moment. And I would like to invite the Commandant National Defense College, Major General Amal Karuna Sekara, to present a memento to General Kamal Gunratna, Secretary, Ministry of Defense, in appreciation of his gracious presence and words of wisdom this morning amidst his busy schedule. Thank you, sir. Today, we have invited an eminent personality to address the symposium on the theme, multinodal security dynamics. Mr. Ladit Virtunga was the former principal advisor to His Ex Excellency, the President of Sri Lanka, member of Board of Management of Postgraduate Institute of Management and Governing Council, Sri Lanka Technology Campus. He is a proud product of Royal College. Mr. Virtunga holds a master's degree in business administration from the University of Colombo and a bachelor's degree in natural sciences from the same university. Later, he attended Pennsylvania State University for postgraduate studies. He is a Hubert H. Humphrey Fellow of the Pennsylvania State University, United States. He has held the highest public sector position of secretary to the President of Sri Lanka from 2005 to 2015. He was the chairman of the Telecommunications Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka, chairman of Petroleum Resources Development Committee, and many committees and presidential task forces on state sector reforms. He counts 36 years of public sector executive positions in the Sri Lanka administrative service. Advisory and consultancy expertise in public and private sectors, both locally and internationally. He was a lecturer and consultant for the Postgraduate Institute of Management, University of Sri Jayawardenepura, Sri Lanka, for many MBA programs and other training assignments for public sector organizations. He has consulted for International Labor Organization, Save the Children, United Nations Development Program of Maldives, Export Development Board, and Employees Trust Fund. He has published many academic papers and written study manuals on distance education for public servants program and the executive MBA MPA program for various organizations. Mr. Lalit Virtunga will be accompanied by Kamado Anil Bovatta, Senior Directing Staff Navy of National Defense College. General Kamal Gunratna, Secretary of the Ministry of Defense, Chief Guest this morning, Chief of Defense Staff, Commander of the Army, Commander of the Navy, Commander of the Air Force, Senior Representatives of the Police Department, the two distinguished former Secretaries uh, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Paliakkar, and Mr. Rabna Tarya Singh, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Commandant of the National Defense College, Vice Chancellor of the Kotalawara Defense University, 
respected academics and researchers, senior officers of the armed forces and the police, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. I'm deeply honored, undoubtedly, and consider it a privilege to have been invited to deliver this keynote address at the inaugural annual research symposium of the National Defense College of Sri Lanka. I was fortunate to participate in the opening of this august institution by President Gotabe Rajapaksa. And today, it's indeed a rare moment for me to share a few thoughts along the theme, exploring national security dynamics in contemporary Sri Lanka. Well, in doing so, I must also say that some of the thoughts that I'm going to present this morning have already been discussed by uh, the chief guest. I'm thankful that you raised some of these issues already. None would disagree that we live in a world that is in turmoil today more than ever in our recent collective memory. Wars in myriad forms created both by man and nature are creeping into our own front yards. These are not just wars waged by man against man armed with weaponry and intelligence. These are wars that are sometimes created by forces of nature, by policy errors, by geopolitical interests, and by transnational effects. We all face such a war in recent times, unleashed by an invisible aggressor of biblical proportions, the coronavirus. We saw how it exposed the sheer vulnerability and haplessness of societies from the world's superpowers to the least developed nations. As this seemingly unearthly foreign perpetrator launched its invasion and indiscriminately sought and claimed its victims, leaving a trail of 6.5 million deaths in its path of destruction, even the most powerful nations found themselves on retreat, realizing that their traditional mighty forces of defenses were of no match. So it is in this context that we need to explore contemporary national security dynamics. I'm conscious that I'm before an audience of most, mostly military men and women, and of course, civilian researchers, academics, and strategists representing largely, I believe, defense and security domains. I may be forgiven if I thought that this symposium would be more enriched by a wider participation in areas outside defense and security areas. The reason for my observation will hopefully become clear to you as I share my thoughts with you. So what constitutes national security in the modern age? Joseph J. Rom, in his book, Defining National Security and Non-Military Aspects, traces the etymology of the phrase national security, which he says was not in wide use until after World War II. Incidentally, Joseph J. Rom has also written extensively on climate change. He goes back to a 1945 Senate hearing in the US. Navy Secretary James Forrestall tells the Senate, and I quote, our national security can only be assured on a very broad and comprehensive front. The question of national security is not merely the army or the Navy or the Air Force. We have to take into account our whole potential for war, our mines, industry, manpower, research, and all the activities that go into normal civilian life, unquote. Now, this is in way back in 1945. In this broad arena of national security, military security, of course, takes prime importance. There's no doubt about it. Yet it's only one very important part of it. Today, national security concerns have come to encompass social, economic, political, and environmental disciplines 
as well. Modern defense and security systems are now expected to be equipped not only for military threats, but also for non-military threats and hybrid threats. Barry Buzan, a pioneer and one of the most cited scholars in international security, defines the concept of security as a particular type of politics applicable to a wide range of issues. According to Buzan, and I quote, security is taken to be about the pursuit of freedom from threat and ability of states and societies to maintain their independent identity and their functional integrity against forces of change, which they see as hostile." Unquote. In saying so, he leaves room for different states to define their own spheres of security. This truly is a state-specific activity because security itself is a dynamic concept that depends on an entire gamut of factors, ranging from the military through diplomacy to socio-economic ones. Security of states in the 21st century is mainly focused on international, sorry, in internal fact, where even a social unrest can cause a considerable impact. The individual has started to assume the prime position in national security, which states earlier used to hold. The term human security has assumed the foremost importance over the military components of security. This is the result of globalization and as a consequence, the networking possibilities that have been made available to global citizens. The interconnectedness that has been created through this global networking has caused to redefine our individual identities. That is a lot on the plate for any researcher. All of these threats strike in many different forms of aggression. Terrorism, separatism, piracy, environmental disasters, theft of natural resources, food insecurity, energy insecurity, nuclear, biological, and chemical attacks, disease outbreaks, human and drug trafficking, and above all, overt and covert attempts to subvert the culture of a country or a nation, or for that matter, even a society. Basically, anything that impacts on the safety of the nation in a large scale. Do we incorporate all our anxieties and apprehensions of threat into our domain of national security studies. This is a debate even now taking place among national security strategies. I don't believe we shall have a clear answer anytime soon. But let us consider a major threat we are facing today, both globally and nationally. Climate change and environmental degradation how does it impact on our traditional concerns of national security? The answer seems simple when you come to understand that conflicts over natural resources are probably as old as the world itself. Since ancient times, nations have been invaded, native populations have been driven out, and unspeakable atrocities have been committed in order to secure scarce resources for aggressing parties. I need to take your mind back to the history that we have learned. Talk about the Portuguese, the Dutch, and the British colonizing us. They colonized us because we had a lot of natural resources. Well, historians may have different arguments, but I strongly believe that our natural resources, the uh, nature of the land that we possessed, all these were factors that attracted all these uh, colonizing aggressors. The United Nations Environmental Program, the UNEP, says that in the last three decades, at least 18 violent wars have been fueled due to competition for valuable natural resources like diamonds, gold, minerals, and oil, and scarce resources like 
fertile land and water. Climate change is not strictly considered as a direct source of conflict, yet it is seen as a formidable threat multiplier by scientists, politicians, and civil society groups that exacerbate resource scarcity and existing vulnerabilities. Many countries view the issue of climate change as a great risk to their national security. In a sign of the importance placed by these countries on climate change and national security concerns, in December 2021, over 70 countries engaged in a discussion on a draft UN Security Council resolution. It requested 